from the Super Doppler 10 Weather Center. This is a severe weather alert. We continue our coverage now of extra tropical storm Ermine. A live look at the Virginia Beach oceanfront where it is still very windy and the waves are churning. We have a lot to get to, including a team of reporters in the field. But first, we want to get the latest information from meteorologist Jeremy Wheeler. Jeremy, where do things stand now? All right, well, Exwell, uh, this is no longer a tropical system. It's more of a nor'easter type system now as it moves offshore. Uh, technically, you call it extra tropical, but uh, a lot of people relate to it a little bit better when you call it a nor'easter. So that's what's going to be happening. It's going to move to the northeast. We'll have a northeasterly wind here for a while. You can see a lot of rain on the backside, even though the center now is offshore, but there's a lot of rain on the backside, even in Hampton Roads and some into northeast North Carolina. So that rain is going to continue through the uh, afternoon and then it should taper off late afternoon into the evening. The computer models take our mean off to the northeast, but then some of them try to bring it back to the west a little bit as we go Sunday into Monday. Uh, then they finally take it to the northeast Wednesday, Thursday, but it's possible we can see the effects linger into tomorrow, at least the winds and maybe. Maybe even a little bit into Monday, we'll see. I think the rain will be gone, but the wind may stay up. The winds have caused some high waves. This is what it looks like down at Cape Hatteras Lighthouse right now. Uh, there have been some surfers in the water. I do not recommend that. It's very dangerous to go in the water at all. And uh, we do have some high waves. And plus the tide, it's going down around Hatteras, and it's starting to go down here, but it just started to. As you can see, that water made it into the parking lot of Wavy TV. It's a common occurrence. We call this Lake Wavy uh, just for fun. But at the same time, it is you know, a little dangerous to be driving around in this. You can get stuck, and uh, don't walk in the water water if it's high in your neighborhood because there's a lot of things that can get in there, uh, a lot of bacteria, a lot of dirt, debris, so please don't walk in the water if you can help it. Now, uh, the winds, they're under the northeast. They're strong. Virginia Beach, northeast gust 49 miles an hour. You got a gust of 40 out of the north in Norfolk and a gust out of the north at uh, Killowa Hills 43. Hatteras, northwest wind 49 miles an hour, the gust. And even in Edenton, we got a gust of 32 miles an hour. So the winds are still strong. Look at these winds here in Hampton Roads. Hampton right now winds uh, northeast 38 miles an hour. Even in Suffolk and Franklin, winds above 25 as well as Williamsburg at this time. So the wind forecast, the peak winds or the gust, uh, still about 50 miles an hour near the shore between now and 3 p.m. But they do start dropping a little bit around 5 o'clock. Uh, still breezy near the shore. Inland, those winds start dropping. And I think by the time we hit 11 o'clock, inland locations, the winds will be down quite a bit. And even near the shore, maybe some uh, winds gusting 25 to 30, 35 at the most. And there's Sunday morning, the winds uh, breezy near the eastern shore, Virginia Beach and Killable Hills, but elsewhere we should be doing pretty good for tomorrow. Now the rain is along the coast. You can see a lot of rain in here. Uh, it's trying to move back into mainland Dare County. It's uh, very slowly doing so. Uh, so Mashu is going to see some rain again pretty soon. And here's northeast North Carolina. Lots of rain. It's steady. There's some moderate showers here around Grandy. Uh, it's breaking up west of Elizabeth City into Perquimans County. But there's uh, some more showers working back into Gates County. Lots of rain across the south side. It's mostly light. There's some moderate showers in here. It's wind driven though, but rain from Virginia Beach into Suffolk on the north end and a few showers over towards Holland. And then uh, in, on the peninsula, some rain and it extends into the bay, but it's almost over with in Ch uh, Gloucester, pardon me, and uh, Matthews. And then on the eastern shore, you've got some widespread rain there. Now the tide has come and gone for many. It will be uh, dropping now, but towards the evening time, we're going to see the next tide. Uh, Sewell's Point, 6 feet, 1125. There's Duck, North Carolina, 935, uh, 6.4 feet, and Wachapreeg, 6.9 feet. This will be up to moderate levels. I think uh, the forecasts have been coming down a little bit, so these numbers may change, and we'll have updates on that later today. So between now and 2 p.m., the rain tapers off. The tidal flooding will slowly subside. The water drops there between 2 and 6, maybe just a few showers left over, and a few showers are possible 6 to 10 p.m., mostly near the coast, breezy near the shore, but the winds will be down quite a bit. So watch out for those winds. Watch out for that tidal flooding. It is around today. We'll see improvement as we go into tonight and tomorrow as the winds come down a bit. And uh, tomorrow we're looking pretty good, but there might be a few leftover showers. Again, we'll have updates on tomorrow's forecast coming up. That's the weather forecast. Now I'll turn it over to Lex. All right, now to 10 on your side's Jason Marks. He has been up and down the Outer Banks since yesterday, this morning, checking out possible tornado damage. And Jason, right now, you're watching NC12. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of spots on Highway 12 that are uh, passable but have water on them. Take a look like this area behind me. This is in the waves area of Hatteras Island. And you can see as these cars start to come through, 
Hey, how you doing? Uh, as these cars start to come, you can see they're standing water. And many of the, the, the areas on Highway 12 look like this. It's just standing water. And if you have a car that's low to the ground, you might not be able to get through and definitely do not want to try to drive through it. Now, that's all rainwater. That's not from overwash or from sound side flooding. That's all rainwater. Deputies said at one point they uh, radioed in that they might have eight inches in some points on Highway 12. Now, something else we've been watching because we've been up and down Highway 12. We went all the way down to Hatteras um, where they had that tornado, that possible tornado touchdown earlier today. And we want to show you some fresh video that we just edited for you and take a look at this is from the Hatteras Sands campground. Uh, this was from like a one o'clock in the morning when this happened, a possible tornado touchdown. You can see that two campers are on their sides. One, they were both next to each other. One is turned over. The other one actually ended up in a nearby canal. We're told people were in both those campers. And fortunately, they were both able to get out in time. Families able to get out before those campers flipped. Now you might see those two cabanas sitting in the middle of the canal. We're told in that pink cabana, there was four people in that pink cabana. Whatever came through, whether it was straight line winds or whether it was that tornado, pick those cabanas up and toss them into the canal upside down that that pink one is and uh, the four people inside that cabana were able to swim get out swim to safety we're told they were taken to the hospital with minor injuries now we spoke with a woman who was inside one of those campers and here's her account of what happened around one o'clock this morning the alarm came over on my husband's phone that said tornado warning take shelter got him up got my sister-in-law up, grabbed the kids and the dogs, and ran out of the camper. I came over here because they don't have a smartphone. So by the time I knocked on their door, told them to get out, I turned and the truck and the camper had already started to lift. And then their camper, they got out in time, and their camper went straight into the canal. What are you thinking at this? I mean, I know, I know it's happening so fast, but what is this like for you? I'm in a state of shock right now. But all the kids are fine, you know, so the county's been great. They've put the whole family up in a hotel. Um, it's, we just want to get our stuff and, and go, you know, that's the biggest thing. Very emotional there to be through something like that. Said she was still in shock at this point and to make matters worse. As we were there and we were about to leave, the high tide was just getting there and so all the water was rising and so the campers that were still there were probably underwater as we were pulling away. Um, I can tell you that we don't know yet if it was a tornado. The National Weather Service will come out, they're going to survey the damage and then decide whether it was something like straight line winds or whether it was a tornado that touched down. At the time, we were under a, um, a tornado warning in Hatteras, so that makes sense, but uh, it'll be up to the National Weather Service to determine whether it was a tornado or not. My colleague Joe Fisher will have much more on that story from the Hatteras Village area on that possible tornado coming up tonight on Wavy News 10 at 6. But for now, that's the latest here on the Outer Banks. Jason Marks, now back to you. All right, thanks, Jason. And a quick note from Dominion, Virginia Power. They've got about 50,000 people without power around Hampton Roads. That's a slight drop from earlier this morning. Still not great, though. Report your outages at dom.com. And plenty of you helped us tell the story of this storm by sending in pictures from around the area. Here's a picture of flooding from Pocosin during high tide. As you can see, the water is way past that fence. Don't forget, with high tide and the rain across the area, you can expect to see a lot of areas like this. And now over to Virginia Beach. A viewer sent two pictures to our newsroom of trees down in the Aragona neighborhood. The first one, you can see the tree down in front of that brown house. Luckily, it looks like the tree missed the house in the picture. In the second one, it's closer up, same tree. It doesn't look like it did a lot of damage, but just look how close it is to the SUV in that picture. All right, now to floods out in Norfolk. This picture was sent about an hour ago. You can see floods from the rain in the area, and there appears to even be some debris toward the bottom of that picture. Flooding in Norfolk is pretty widespread. This is a picture sent in by viewer Jordan Taylor. You can see the flooding in this picture in Ghent. This is over by the Hag and the Footbridge. And one other picture from Norfolk. Here's a look at a tree down on Poplar Hall Circle. You're able to see the root system at the bottom of the tree from where that was uprooted. 
And this is on Riverside Drive in Portsmouth off High Street near the Elizabeth River. You can see the water is up over the street and into yards there. Now to Chesapeake, Jeremy Hackworth took this picture around 9.30. He says he took the picture along Martin Johnson Road in the Deep Creek area. The tree and the caution tape have the road blocked off, but he says the road is a main entrance to several neighborhoods in that area. And now on up to the peninsula, Hampton police continue to put up a lot of pictures on their Twitter page of storm damage. This is a picture from the Salters Creek portion of the city, and you can see the Armory Seafood Market sign in the background and see the water rising from behind those buildings. And now some video from Hampton police. The city has been using Periscope to show flooded and damaged areas across the city. This is a look at conditions from First Street and Pilot Avenue in Buckrow. A lot of vehicles continue to drive through those flooded roads. Make sure you're safe if you're going to a flooded area. And as always, please do not try and drive through flooded streets. A reminder, if you see breaking news or weather, and if it's safe to do so, please shoot pictures or video and send those to report it at wavy.com. Ermine caused a lot of cancellations from local events to flights coming in and out of Hampton Roads. One of the last scheduled events to postpone was the Bruce Springste Springsteen concert tonight. That'll now be Monday night in Virginia Beach. And if you're flying out today or you have someone flying in, be sure to check flight statuses before you head out. You can count on us to keep you updated all afternoon long on the air and on wavy.com. Team coverage comes your way again tonight on Wavy News 10 at 6. Stay with the station on your side.